الحمد لله الحمد لله واحد القهار عزيز الغفار مكو الليل على النهار تذكرة للقلوب والبصار ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وخليله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم قيد المطوب عليهم ولا الطالين آمين Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us the opportunity to come for Salat al-Jum'ah. It comes in a hadith, Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala an, he said the person who comes, takes proper bath, prepares properly for, uh, with, the, uh, with the proper intention, and he comes early for, uh, for, for Jum'ah Salah, and he sits near to the, to the Imam uh, with the proper intention, with, uh, with proper niyyah, he said that he gets two reward. He said, one is that he gets the, uh, it's such a blessed day, that he, the one reward that he gets for coming for Jum'ah, that he gets to, uh, to pray, he gets, he gets to, gets the reward of praying one year, a one year, a one year salah at night. And other one, one year fasting. Other reward is one year fasting. So if you ask one of, uh, any of us, how many times we have prayed tahajjud? How many, how many days we have prayed? They probably, you know, Ramadan maybe, you know, if you ask, or maybe once a month, maybe once a year, twice a year, something like that. And but Allah SWT is giving this, uh, this individual for coming for Salat al-Jum'ah on the day of Friday, he gets the reward of performing uh, Salah at night for the entire year, and fasting as well. And uh, another narration comes, Rasulullah said that this day is so blessed, it was given to other nations as well. It was given to the Christians, it was given to the Jews. He said, but they have rejected this day and they have taken some other day instead of day of Friday, of Jummah. He said that the Christian, they have take, uh, taken Sunday as their blessed day. And, 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 and the Jewish, they have taken Yom Sabt, Saturday as their blessed day. But this day was preserved for my Ummah and was given to me. And, uh, and then he goes on, a hadith, uh, and the Hadith continues and he said that the entire creation is in fear of this day. But except for Insan and Jinn. The insan and jinn, the in, uh, reason they're not, they don't fear this day is because of ghafla, because on this day, the day of Qiyamah will take place and the entire creation is in fear. And the hadith, go, and the, and the hadith of Ibn Masur radiallahu anh, that as I mentioned, that best of, best, uh, best of deen is given to us, best of Nabi. Right? He said, uh, Allah uh, Ibn Masur narrates the hadith. He said, Inna Allah nadara fi qulub al ibad. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala scope out the hearts of his worshippers, most beloved people, most beloved individual. He said, Fakhtara Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has chosen Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, as his, uh, uh, he has chosen Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and he said, Fa'arsalahu uh, birisa. And he has, uh, and, he, and he descend him with, with risala. He made him a prophet. Okay, after he, he chose him to be the best of Nabi and Sayyidul Anbiya. Khatamun and it reminds me of, it reminds me of a narration is uh, in Musnad Ahmad more or less he said that there's one one Bedouin he was hunting he was hunting lizards and in Arabs they had custom of eating lizard uh, geckos from desert so and he hunted some lizards so he hunted a lizard and he put it into his pouch and he was coming back to his town and he saw a gathering uh, the Rasulullah sallallahu and Sahaba and Rasulullah is preaching and so he asked the people around him what's going on here so someone told him that this some per person claims himself to be a Nabi and, and, and he rejects the idols so this Bedouin becomes very, he becomes very angry and he soared by his he says soared by my idols soared by my gods and he said I hate this person more than any other uh, any person that is born onto the face of this earth he said, I hate this person without any reason. So he makes his way to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, comes into the crowd, and he comes right in front of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said that he starts cursing at Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He starts scolding at Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umar ibn Khattab is sitting and he said, uh, he, said ya Rasul. he said, command me, I'll go take care of this individual. Rasulullah said, no, stay calm. He said, Anbiya, uh, he said, Anbiya they, uh, they deal with people with hikmah. And I'm rahmatul alameen and I'm most uh, uh, 
uh, most mercy uh, and uh, have mercy onto onto the people and to the entire entire creation on the face of this earth. So hold on, uh, let me just talk to him. So more or less, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked his Bedouin, he said, what is the reason that you are cursing me? What did I do to you that you are cursing me? That I clean myself to your Prophet? He didn't say that, but it was just a question that he's asking, I haven't done anything to you, and you're just cursing me for no reason. So this Bedouin, you know, becomes little, uh, uh, he has no answer. He has no question, no answer to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he's out of his ignorance, so he takes out the lizard that he hunted, dead lizard, he throws it right in front of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I will not accept you as a Nabi before this lizard. He said, I will not accept you because he had no answer. He's just like, I don't know why I'm cursing at Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have no reason. So he throws it and he said, he said, I will not accept Islam, I will not accept your message before this lizard. SubhanAllah, so Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looks at this lizard and he says, Ya Adabt. And he said that, he said the entire people around him, it was just silent. He said, lizard get, uh, gets on his paws, picks up, uh, picks up, uh, picks up his head. He said, labbaik wa sa'adaik. He said, what an honor. He said, I'm here. He said, what an honor that Nabi Sallallahu is calling me today. And, and, and this one description this lizard gives to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is haven't mentioned any other, any other ahadith. The attributes of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned by many sahaba, and many people, but the lizard that has given this description to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I don't think any, any Sahabi or any, any narration has given. And he said, he said ya, uh, ya man, ya man yawm al All the one who would decorate the day of Qiyamah. All the one who would illuminate the day of Qiyamah. As we know, day of judgment, where there's chaos, you know. He said, uh, the father is running from his son. The companion is running from his friend. And he said that the mother is running from his daughter. But only Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that you're the one because of you, the day of Qiyamah will become decorated. Be a day of Qiyamah will become beautiful. And he said, Ya man wafa yawm al Qiyamah, or the one that would decorate the day of Qiyamah. And he goes on and he said, Ya dab man ta'bud. He said, oh, Lizzie, who, What do you worship? Who do you worship? He said, Ta'bud Allah. He said, I worship, he said, I worship Allah. He said, the one who created the skies and, uh, and the earth, and the one who has control of, uh, uh, over everything. I worship uh, that deity, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Man ana. He said, who am I? He said, uh, so, the, the, so the lizard goes on, he says, he's a Khatim al You're the final seal of the Prophet. And, and it goes on, he said, the one who follows you will become successful. And those one who uh, rejects you will become, uh, will be doomed in this world and hereafter as well. So while this conversation is happening with this lizard, as the narration men uh, mentioned, the lizard spoke lisanu mubin. He just spoke one of the clearest, uh, pure, uh, pure Arabic, so the people understood what this lizard is saying. So when this Bedouin heard this, and and he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna ka Rasulullah. He said, I bear witness, there's none worthy worship except Allah, and you're the Nabi, uh, you're the Nabi of Allah. So, the so, uh, reason I'm mentioning this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the best of Nabi. And then the hadith goes on, he said, فَنَذَرَ uh, فِي قُلُوبِ النَّاسِ Then he looks into the hearts of the, uh, hearts of the people. He said, فَاقْتَارَ أَصْحَابِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Then he has chosen the companion of Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. He has chosen Nabi, uh, the companion of Nabi sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam, and and he said that he said he said they have he made them uh, he made them the helper of Deen, the assistant of Deen, also wazara uh, nabi uh, and he had made them ambassador of his Nabi, of Ambiya and Narish. He said Ambiya that he had made them the ambassador of Ambiya alaihi uh, wasallam. And as we know, so, so we have, we have got the best, best of deen, best of Nabi, best of companion of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have everything best, and I mentioned of the virtue of this, of this day, a day of Friday, the best of, uh, best of days is given to us than, than the previous nation. And, uh, and, 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 and the best of month is given to us, the month of Ramadan. And the best of night is given to uh, Laylat al-Qadr. And the best, day, uh, best of day is given to us. Uh, uh, Yom Arafah, and best of week is given 
uh, the first 10 days of uh, the Hijjah. So everything is given to us is, the, uh, is of the best. And that's the nature of insan. There's a nature of human that he wants everything best. If I ask any of you what kind of car you want, you want the best car. And what kind of house you want, you want the best, best house. What kind of education you want, you want the best education. What kind of job you want, you want the best job. This is the nature of human, that's the temper of human that Allah SWT created. That he wants everything best. But this deen Allah SWT has given us uh, uh, just, just, just as the temperament, just at, just at the desire of, of insan. And in the khutbah, I have recited Surah Al-Fatiha. In Surah Al-Fatiha, Al Al as I mentioned, the, the temperament of human is that he wants everything best. He wants everything that, is, that, uh, that it has to do, that, that progress him, and that maybe he doesn't get it, but his desire is he wants it. He wants, uh, if he, uh, <coughs> best of job, best of anything. So, so, so the biggest gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given insan is hidayah. And, and hidayah is such a powerful thing that the existence of this universe and the survival of this universe remains with hidayah. If hidayah is removed from this universe, this if Hidayah is removed from this universe, its existence and the survival does not survive as well. This, uh, Allah SWT will cause Qiyamah to occur once the Hidayah is removed. For this reason, the hadith, uh, for this reason, the hadith uh, comes in a hadith, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقالوا الله الله في الأرض الله الله More or less, a Sahih Muslim, he said that the, the day of Qiyamah will not occur, will not occur, even, uh, when, uh, even there's a person to say, to utter the name of Allah. You mean to utter the name of Allah, Allah. If there's only a person to say Allah, Allah, Allah will, uh, will, uh, will keep, uh, keep the existence of this universe, of this dunya. And he said, once this person is removed, then the Qiyamah will take place. So in the hadith, it's not mentioned about his fast, uh, it's not mentioned about his ibadah, that he's praying his namaz, if he's praying his salah or not, if he's giving his zakat, if he's giving his fast, only uttering the name of Allah. Only doing the dhikr of Allah, only mentioning His name would have the power to remain this, uh, to keep, uh, uh, keep the existence and the survival of this universe. And the, for this reason, the first insan that came on this, on this face of this earth, the first human that came on this face of the earth, he came as a Nabi. He came as a Nabi, he came uh, 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 with a Nabuwa. Nabuwa is a sign, is, uh, now Hidayah is connected with, uh, with prophethood. So when a nation goes corrupt, when the nation goes in chaos, when the nation is corrupted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Anbiya alayhi wasalam to revive them back. But in, 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 uh, in, 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 when Adam alayhi salam came, there was no nation, there was no human, there's no corruption, there's nothing. So what is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Nabuwa? There, has no, there shouldn't be no any reason that there's, there's no one misguided you know, hidayah will come when there's when there's misguidance, but in in the in the sense uh, in, in in Adam alayhi salam, there's no one misguided, but Allah subhanahu wa taala is showing that not even a moment would go uh, this universe would not go without uh, without hidayah. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa taala sent uh, uh, Adam alayhi salam with uh, nabuwa. So for this reason, 24/7 in our salah, we are asking what? Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. So the ulama have mentioned, the Mufassir have mentioned why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used ihdina. As you know, those who are in uh, uh, you know in the language of Arabic, ihdina is used for jama, for uh, for pro, for for entire. That uh, uh, ihdina that we we are asking for uh, we are asking for guidance. So in here, if uh, so there, there's, there's, a, there's a question that is put on that, okay, I, if I need guidance, I should ask ihdini. If the guidance is for me, so I should ask just for myself. Why should I ask for everyone? everyone? And for me to ask for everyone, it brings, in, it brings a question that I'm thinking that this individual does not have, uh, have hidayah, does not have guidance. So that is wrong for, for me to think of other person to uh, other person that he doesn't have guidance to think bad of uh, the other individual that he doesn't have guidance. So it puts me on jeopardy that that if I'm thinking of this person that he doesn't have guidance that's that's the reason I'm asking Indina. And 
so the answer the Mufassin have given, he said that the first thing is that, uh, that we have a uh, reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because when is ijma'iyah, when there's, when there's a unity, and when, when a dua is made with unity, it has more chances of being accepted. It has more chances of being accepted. If, if it's a, a bigger gathering and the people making dua, it has more chances in, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be accepted than, than, uh, than a person making for himself. And the second, the second thing that I have mentioned is mufadat. Mufadat means the, uh, the, each individual person is connected with one another. They have benefits from one another, student and a teacher, right? uh, uh, father and son, you know, uh, ch uh, shopkeeper and uh, customers. And so every, everyone is benefiting from one another for this reason, when everyone is guided, then, then this, uh, this humanity, this insan could progress in this, uh, in this world. If one is corrupted, then there's no progress. If the entire nation is guided and one person is, is corrupted, then, they, then, uh, then there's, no, there's no way of being progressed because everyone is be worried of, of this individual. If there's a theft around, around in the community, everyone is worrying about the theft instead of worrying about themselves, of their education, of their family, or, uh, or anything, anything that is productive. And if, uh, if, uh, if everyone is corrupted and one person is guided, there's no benefit as well. Because one person, one individual is guided and everyone is corrupted, and has no, uh, he can't do anything about it. And he has no benefit, it doesn't benefit him, neither benef benefits the people. So for this reason, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that we should, uh, uh, th th for this reason is, is used as pearl, as used as, uh, as, 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 as we, that we ask for, uh, ask for guidance in, uh, in, uh, for everyone. The third reason is mentioned is because when, when a mu'min, when he asks for such a great gift, Hidayah is one of the greatest gifts. He said when he asks for such a great gift, he does not show selfishness. He does not, sh he does not show that it is just for him, but he asks for every single person. He doesn't just worry about his iman, he also worries about the uh, iman of the people around him. And this was the, this was, uh, this was the custom of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was the teaching of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and and, and, and uh, to the Sahaba. They didn't. They did not just worry about their iman. They also worry about the iman in their house and the community around them as well. Okay? And so, for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa taala have uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala have using uh, used ihdina the guide uh, guide all of us. The sec uh, the the ihdina sirat. For sirat, sirat means uh, a path, mustaqim, to, uh, to a correct path, to the right path. Sirat, sirat means a path. In, in Arabic, there's other words that you could use. They are more similar, uh, which more easy and uh, similar to it. Tariq or sabil. Why Allah SWT has used sirat, not tariq, not sabil? What, there's more simplif simplified word we could use tariq instead of sirat. It's the reason Allah SWT used sirat. Is because it's reminding this individual when he makes his dua ihdina to guide us to the straight path, sirat, it reminds him of the bridge of sirat that is going to come in the day of judgment. It comes in a hadith of, a hadith of, uh, of Bukhari, more or less. He said that uh, in the day of Qiyamah, there will be a bridge over Jahannam where the uh, pull sirat will be, uh, be placed. And will be uh, and will be told to the uh, to the believer to cross and enter enter into Jannah, and those who are not deserving to enter in Jannah, there will be hooks, will be flying from Jahannam, and there will be hooks onto it. It will be just like fishing. It will hook onto him and will pull him into Jahannam. And it says, and, and the hadith goes on. It says a slippery, it's a slippery bridge. People will slip off who are not deserving to enter in Jannah. And he said those who are deserving and those who are stayed in, uh, in guidance ihdina. He stayed in Sharia. He stayed in the in the commandments of uh, commandments of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, shown by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, then it's easy for him and blink. Uh, someone would cross in the blink of an eye. Someone would cross in the speed of a horse. Someone would cross in uh, speed of light, and more or less. And and he said that the last person to cross the bridge of Sirat will be the person who he would be dragging himself into Jannah. 
And those who are not deserving, there will be hooks from coming from Jahannam and will clinch onto him and will pull him into, uh, into Jahannam. And, and subhanAllah, there's something it reminds me, he said that when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on the journey of, uh, of Miraj, of Isra, he said uh, he was, he was compan uh, his companion, who is, his traveler was Jibreel Alaihi Salam. He, he said when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got to the, uh, got to the state of Sidratul Muntaha, Jibreel Alayhi Salam, he said that I have no permission to go beyond this. He said, if I go beyond this, my wings will burn. And he said, and he said that Jibreel Alayhi Salam, such a, such a huge angel, he said that his wings covers the, one wing covers the west and the one in the, the east. That's how huge this angel is, Jibreel Alayhi Salam. He said that I can't go beyond Siddhartul Muntaha. If I go, my wings will burn and I'll be destroyed. I have no permission. But I have one, he said, now you're by yourself. Now you get to wherever you have to go. Rasulullah he said, Ya Jibreel, you're my companion. You were traveling with me this entire time. Now you're leaving me alone. In the, uh, you're leaving me alone in halfway. <coughs> and he said, this is the command of Allah and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more or less. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have some requests for you. It's showing how, who we are connected with, who we have connected ourselves with, and showing what's, what's our level when we connect ourselves with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we become the Ummati of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's showing it's, uh, the level of our, uh, the Ummah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, basically our, ourself. So Jibreel Alayhi Wasallam said, I have a request for you. The request is, he said, on the, on the day of Qiyamah, the bridge of Sirat will be mounted over Jahannam. He said, I want to take the honor. He said, your, uh, your Ummah will be the first one to cross. He said, I want to take the honor to put, uh, put the bridge of Sirat on my back so it will be easy for, the, uh, for your Ummah to cross. So ask Allah SWT to make this request more or less. So Allah SWT uh, uh, goes beyond Sayyidatul Muntaha. Uh, then there's other stage, stages that then, then, then he said فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى They come so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it was a span of an, uh, of an abode. And he was having conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and so after the conversation, when he's returning, uh, returning back, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds him. He said, remember Jibreel, he said, Ya uh, Habib, that someone requested you something. Jibreel requested you something. He said, yes. He said, Ya Allah, you're uh, a Samir. You're, you hear everything. You, you, uh, you're aware of everything. You listen to everything. So yes, he requested something. And you know the request as well. And, and can he, and, and, for, uh, uh, and th that was his request for, uh, for this Ummah. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Jibreel alayhi salam requested this, uh, requests this, for love of a love of your ummah, and I have granted this request with the love of your uh, ummah as well. And this would this would be the honor that will be given to the ummah of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that the Jibrail uh, will mount a bridge over over his back, and it will be easy for us to cross. So for this reason, when when he said ihdina, when he's guided into into this in, into uh, into this world, once hidayah comes into him, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa taala is reminding him of bridge of Sirat, that if you obey by the commandments of Sharia, if you obey by the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the Sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it will be easy for him to cross the bridge of Sirat. If he doesn't, then it will be hooked into Jahannam and he will be clashed into Jahannam. So, and, and, and then he said, and the next word is Mustaqim. What is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have used in the word Mustaqim? He could have used Sawi. Sawi also means correct. Why does why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the word mustaqim? It's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word mustaqim once the hidayah comes, uh, com comes into him. When hidayah comes into him and reminds him of hereafter. And then once he reminds him hereafter, mustaqim comes from istiqamah. Now he has to have persistence in, uh, in following the sharia, in following the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he does not have persistence and consistency in following the sharia, that one day he's following Sharia, the next day he's following his own uh, his desire, then 
he would not be able to uh, cross the bridge of Sirat. Now once the Hidayah comes into him, now he needs to stay mustaqim, he has to stay istiqama onto the deen, whatever comes upon him, the difficulties or the good days or the bad days, anything that comes upon him, he has to stay, he has to stay what, uh, with persistence onto the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Sahabi comes and he says, and he looks at Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Rasulullah, indeed I love you. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you sure, you sure that you're, you're sure that you love me? He said, of course, he said, my father, my, uh, my parents be, you know, sacrificed. Of course I love you. So he said, you sure that you really love me? He said, of course I love you, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, my life is for you, everything is for you, more or less. So he made him repeat four times. He said that if you're, if you're truthful on your claim, remember, calamities will come upon you. Calamities will come upon you so fast as if, as if the water flows from a slope. As if the water flows from a slope, that's how fast calamities will come upon you because you're following the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. That how persistent you stay unto the deen, how persistent you stay into the love of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, for, uh, so, 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 so as I mentioned, the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used ihdina, the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used sirat, the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used mustaqim, so is, is, is that, that he, once the guidance comes into him, he needs to, be, uh, he needs to, be, uh, he needs to remember the day of Qiyamah, he needs to remember the bridge of sirat, one of, uh, one of, the, one of the only pathway to enter in Jannah. That's what he has to say, uh, stay reminded of. And that's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word sirat and not any other word. And when uh, and mustaqim is reminding him that it shouldn't be that one week you're following, following sharia, next week you're following your own desire and you're following your, uh, 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 however you want to live. He said, no, every single, every single moment from, from the time you wake up, from the time you go to sleep, it should, be, it, should be, it should be in the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, uh, it should be in the way of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It says, it says the person who's, 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 uh, uh, who follows the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 24-7 as if the, his entire, entire life is in ibadah. That his entire life is in ibadah. So we'll conclude in this. And may Allah give us ihdina May Allah guide us to the straight path. And give us persistence in, in following the deen of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.